What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas. And today I'm gonna to be doing a video on stocks every long trader should avoid. Uh, I felt this one was kind of an important one because a lot of people were asking me questions and a lot of people have been messaging me about it. So I just thought that I'd, I'd go ahead and make a video on it. First of all, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. So even if this seems like investment advice, it's, it's not. So without further ado, let's kind of get into the video. Uh, so yeah, these are types of questions that I was getting this week. I didn't include all of them. I just thought that I'd, I'd write it down in a PowerPoint. Hey, Harry, how do you take a stock off your screen? I feel like I've been missing opportunities. How do you tell if a stock is broken or if it has some potential? How do you find what stocks to avoid and what stocks are the best in the morning? And that was one that I've been getting frequently. And I was a little bit surprised because in main chat, you know, we, we are always kind of talking about, okay, this stock is broken down now. It's under death line. Uh, this is not a stock that I'm looking to long. I always try to kind of point that out. And I think Bao does a pretty good job. And, and Alex will do the same thing as well. Tosh, all of us will kind of just try and guide everyone together just to kind of say whether if, if a stock is broken or whether they're going to go long or whether they're going to go short. So that's why I was a little bit surprised that I kind of got these questions. But it does kind of make sense because every once in a while we do get these kind of black swans where no one's really paying attention to the stock and the stock ends up ripping. So I'm just going to show you my kind of hard and fast rules for avoiding and when I think you can still look at a stock. So in short, it's basically when there are no lines left to long. And this is kind of uh, something that I have even struggled with in my own trading, but I, I'm going to kind of give some examples so you can kind of understand. A broken intraday chart with a terrible daily chart, um, you know, that's just some clues that I'm looking for. The, these are just basically clues. Um, you know, a previous runner from the past that keeps making new lows on the daily and that keeps making new lows on the intraday as well. And most likely, you know, not going to be the hot chick. So in the morning, what I have found is that out of kind of the four or five stocks that we're kind of looking at in the morning, or maybe we even get two or three, there's going to be one that there's a lot of volume and that everyone's pay, paying attention to. And that one is the one that we refer to the hot chick or as the hot chick. But there's also going to be another one where we kind of see the stock gap up and it, it's not getting as much volume and it's not getting as much attention. And those ones are more so the side chicks and those ones are more so the ones that I'm looking to avoid. There can be also day one side chicks too, where it's kind of in, in where I talk about where I like to avoid them because they're not getting as much volume as the main stocks. And that's just pretty much it. I just like to be long the main ones. I think it's really important just to be kind of long and focused on the main ones and let the other ones kind of do their thing. So in a bit more detail, uh, I know I've said this before, but I wanted to just state it again. It's basically when there's no support lines left, where there's no lines possibly left for me to long. Decreasing volume, uh, the tape barely moving. It was funny today, we actually got a, a, a stock opened up this morning, uh, and it's actually an example in this video. And someone said, did the stock get halted? You know, is there is there an issue with the stock? Did the stock get halted? What kind of happened here? And uh, Bao kind of quietly commented and said, yeah, no one's buying it. There's no volume. And those are basically the stocks that I'm always looking to avoid as a long trader. Uh, so it's basically buyers are trapped. Sellers are in control. They're usually far below VWAP. And you can use VWAP as a guide in for you to kind of gauge how far the stock is 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 down. So basically, if a stock is, is under VWAP by a lot and it's fading, it's making new lows, it's it's almost always going to be an avoid for me. And they usually look like this. This is basically the, the type of pattern that I'm, I'm looking to avoid 100% of the time. And I think it's really important to kind of uh, show this type of diagram. I know it's just a drawing. We have some examples later. But these types of, types of stocks every day are ones that I will let, you know, short sellers short 
and I'll just pay attention to the hot chicks on the day. These ones are, are never going to be along for me at all. And basically what happens here is we kind of get this gap up pre-market or this like kind of little pump up pre-market. And then for the rest of the day, we get this fade. And those are the ones that I'm looking to avoid, you know, pretty much 100% of the time. And these are some problems that I've been noticing in my DMs that I also wanted to kind of address because there's a lot of FOMO when you're a long trader because you're going to have chat room pumps all over the place and you're going to see the chat room pumps and think, oh my God, I missed an opportunity. And then you kind of get into the revenge trading and then you kind of get into almost like a toxic mindset. And it's happened to me before when I first started. So I just want to kind of talk about, uh, you know, some of those things. So a lot of things that I've been noticing in my DMs are that there are a lot of newer traders I find are comfortable with these type of stocks because they're moving a lot slower. And because they're moving so slow, you kind of get attracted to them because you're like, you know what, I'm a beginner, I'm going to get to the hot chicks later, I'm going to understand how the hot chicks work later. And instead of that, I'm, go I'm just going to look for a slow one. I like my goal on the day is a 10 cent scalp anyway. So I might as well just look for a slower moving stock that I think has potential to give me a 10, 20 cent scalp. And you know, that's fine for me on the day. And the reason that that doesn't work as well is because no one else is really buying it. And there's a lot of sellers in control. And if your goal is to be a long trader, you always want to be longing when there is a lot of demand for the stock and a lot of volume. And you know, you can line long off a, a, a particular line or wherever. There's tons of strategies and plans that we talk about every day. But basically, yeah, this is something that I've been finding and it's completely normal and natural where you just want to long something that's a little bit slower because you feel that, yeah, it, maybe I can get a 10, 20 cent scalp out of it and that's all I'm looking for on the day anyway. So, you know, I'm just going to try and long the slower one. And my kind of solution for it would be to, to, to put yourself in that kind of, maybe maybe it's a position that's a little bit uncomfortable. I know when I started longing, it was really uncomfortable for me trying to, to long the hot chick. But, you know, I think that once you start kind of getting used to them and sizing down and just focusing on the process every day, uh, that's probably the sweet spot for you. Because, you know, there's been tons of people that have messaged me and they're just kind of longing a fading sock and they're like, man, I just tried to get the bottom. It's a lot slower. That's what made me feel like so much more comfortable, bro. Like, do you have anything? And I, I just basically said, yeah, you should try and focus on longing the, the hot chick. Like, like even Bao has started longing, like today he was long a ticker all day and that's pretty insane uh, considering he's like a NASDAQ short seller. And, you know, he he wasn't going and looking to long the, the stocks that he was usually shorting. He was longing stocks that, you know, were the hot chick. And I think that that's important. We're trying to long the hot chicks and we're going to let the other side chicks be for the short sellers. So be it, there may be a side chick that pops, but it's better for a short play. And I think if you're a long trader, you want to be longing long plays and leave the short plays to the shorts instead of trying to chase these kind of hot ch or side chicks around, you know. Uh, here we go, example eight, same ticker again. It did the same type of, so this was on 214 and this was on 222, yeah. So this was on February 4th and this one was on uh, Valentine's Day, uh, February 14th. And again, we get this, this pump and this liquid kind of, it's a liquid kind of setup and kind of opens near it low, its lows and off we go. The fade has has kind of continued and that's just pretty much it for this these types of stocks. I mean, these aren't these aren't stocks that I'm 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 loving. These aren't stocks that I'm looking for. These are just pure just kind of avoids for me. And again, here's the daily chart. This was the previous daily chart that I just kind of showed you. I guess a couple more days passed and we got another gapper, another fresh PR. But yeah, I mean, that's just really pretty much it. So uh, that's the end of my kind of examples part of the video. Uh, for takeaways, not downtrending PM, uh, pre-market, you know, no support left. Nothing's 100%, but the sooner that you can recognize these types of patterns, the more you can focus on the best long tickers. And you, stock selection is important in the morning. And when you can develop your process to select the best stocks to put you in the best position for your type of bias or your type of strategy or your type of pattern, uh, I think that's really, really important. So, uh, 
yeah, that brings me to the end of the video. Uh, I'm always here. I'm always in chat, like literally all the time. If we haven't done a call, please set one up because I, I love to get to know new people and new members. And I've been getting to know actually a lot of people that aren't just like members and aren't just like aren't just like random people who I just talked to for like 10 minutes. Uh, I, I get to know people that I literally consider like my friends now and they ask me advice all the time. And I literally consider like people that I talk to every day, like literally my friends in here and family because we talk so much and it's just everyone is always, always learning new things. And I mean, you have someone like Bao who has been a short seller for so long and he might have gone long once in a while, but this is the most I've ever seen Bao go long in the, in the last you know, three, four months. So I mean, everyone's always working on new things. Who knows, maybe maybe I'll get into to short selling, you know, it, it just all comes down to, uh, you know, your own personality and whatever, but we're always learning and we're always getting better. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. And I hope this helped you out. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.